contract to coach the Toronto Maple Leafs. Um, I guess, you know, first off, from my perspective, I'd like to thank Mike for 10 fabulous years. Uh, you know, hired Mike in 2005, and uh, we made the playoffs for 10 consecutive years. I uh, went to the final four three straight years in 07, 08, 09, and won a cup in, 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 in 08. And at the same time, you know, the last few years, I thought he did a fabulous job in um, putting some younger players in our uh, organization onto our team and developing them into uh, players that we think are going to uh, help us going forward. So, uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, I've got mixed emotions today. Uh, Mike and I were in Prague together for five, you know, from, uh, I got there last Sunday, he got there Tuesday, and then we flew home on Sunday, spent eight hours uh, sitting beside each other in the plane. Um, and then, uh, you know, I talked to, he was at my office yesterday for about an hour, and then he came over to my house this morning at eight o'clock in the morning, texted me, and we spent some time this morning. Uh, so I've got I've got mixed emotions because he's, uh, he's he's one of the greatest coaches in the league, if not the greatest coach. But at the same time, um, you know, as we went through the process, I think Mike understood that when you coached in the same city for ten years, um, you know my offers last June were a four-year term. Uh, again in January was a four-year term. We went to he, he, he when we started the process. He wanted to kind of go out and talk to teams that had interest. And then, and then as we sat yesterday morning, I said, Mike, the best I can do is five years. When you've coached, when you've been in the same city as long as I have and as long as Mike has, you, you don't get much longer term than four and five years. So I think that the certainly part of the decision-making process probably for Mike was uh, the amount of term that he could get uh, in Toronto versus what we were prepared to give. Um, do you feel like you were left yelping? I don't, you know, I think, I think that, um, you know, I, I certainly knew when we, s you know, I'm going to go back two weeks ago, when Mike and I drove up to Grand Rapids and spent uh, time together and he said, Ken, I'd like an opportunity to uh, explore the market. And I, I said, give me a few days. I, I talked to our owners, talked to Jimmy Devolano, talked to a couple other people and eventually g decided to grant them permission. Certainly when, when you've got a guy like Mike Babcock who's, Accomplished what he's accomplished, and 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 uh, one of the faces probably of our of our of our hockey club. I certainly knew that it was going to it was going to be uh, something that was watched uh, very very closely. I, I don't think anything. I wanted Mike back. If Mike, at the end of the day, wanted to be here, if if if, if he felt at the end of the uh, of the process, this was the best fit for him. I, and I also would say to you, I know that. Uh, um, I think it was a different. I know it was a difficult decision. For him, I think he, you know, you, he's got roots here. He's been here for ten years. His family has roots. You get close to the players. We spent five days with uh, watching uh, the World Championships and watching Dylan Larkin, and and you know he's, he's more of the future. And I, that's sort of the direction that we're that we're going. So I, th I know it was a difficult decision, but at the end of the day, he made a decision that he felt was best for him. Now uh, I've got some decisions to make, and uh, our goal is to beat Mike. Yeah, yeah, is, is Jeff you Lashley your new next head coach? Can you speak a little closer? Uh, sure, okay, sorry, yeah. Uh, what I'm going to do, I talked to Blash today. I told Blash that uh, they, uh, I'm waiting to see their playoff schedule because they're going in the third round. Uh, tonight's game seven, Oak City versus Utica, and then once I know the schedule, I'm going to go down and spend some time uh, a day with them. So uh, he's certainly a, a leading candidate. I haven't made a final decision. I, I, I need to, to spend some time with them before, uh, before I know anything. So I... Uh, Hopefully next, hopefully next week I get over to talk to, spend yeah. some time with Blash. Is Dan Bowser on the mix? Uh, he's certainly a name. I've got a, well, I've, I haven't really had a chance to put some names together, but I've got, uh, my list is going to be short. It's going to be two or three names. Um, but that's certainly a good name. When, when, you when did you know that you were out of the running for Mike? When Pardon me? When, when did you know that, that you were uh, At 11.15 today. So you had negotiated all the way up to 11.15? Uh, I don't know if ne talked. You know, I, negotiation to me to, to me means you stand there and you keep exchanging numbers back and forth. And I think that that certainly exchanging you know numbers were they're always a part of the decisions that any of us make in in, in, in sports. But it was also you know uh, there was a lot of other things. So you know again when he came he texted me this morning at eight o'clock and came to my house. We spent about a half an hour together, forty minutes. Um, before I headed down to the to the to the office, you know, we wanted we had one more good talk, and I told him I would, 
I had a couple of players that I had to interview, and I was going to call him when that was done. And I called him at 11:15. He told me he said Canada made a decision, and uh, I'm going to Toronto. Yeah, so he said from the get-go. Pardon me? How surprised are you with the numbers? I've been in this sport a long time, yeah, yeah. and uh, you know, one of the things that I said to Mike, uh, I think I've said it to all, to all you. Anytime you're an unrestricted free agent in the prime of your career. Um, there's going to be opportunities that probably will will stagger you, and um, you know, given, and I don't, I use the word stagger because certainly when you look at the um, sort of, I'm aware of what the industry pays, um, but but in order sometimes to get people, you've got to go, you know, above and beyond the industry standards in order to, to try to get somebody to to come to you. So. Um, I'm happy for Mike. You know, again, I, I Mike gave I was Mike gave Red Wing fans and, and our organization uh, ten fabulous years. Um, I love working with Mike. You know, so um, I'm happy for him. He said from the get go that it was about winning and it was about family. And you look at yeah. Toronto and I don't know if they're going to win anytime soon. Are, are you a little shocked? And were you guys ever? Do you think you guys were ever the front runner? I mean, you have to ask Mike that. I would say to you um, that it was, it was, I, I just know it was a difficult decision because I was sort of, you know, I was, I was, I was involved at the front end and then he went, we went to Prague and then, and then uh, we were both in Prague. He met with some people there. Uh, Brendan Shanahan came over there on Friday or something. We spent some time with Shani over in Prague. Um, you know, who was the front runner? How do you handicap the race? That's one for Mike. Um, I just think that again, that he'd been here for ten years. Um, he he had you know when you've been somewhere for a long time, you got roots. Uh, we've worked hard to try to build a program. I mean, we actually talked about that the last couple of days. You know, a program of player development, drafting, and, and they come up here and Mike makes them accountable. And there's some young players. We're trying to transition here to to some younger people. We're trying to stay c competitive. We're trying to compete. To make the playoffs, we're trying to compete to, to go on a playoff run, um, and I and I think when you put your heart and soul, we've worked together hand in hand, that these aren't easy decisions. If 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 they were easy decisions, you probably had the wrong people in the first place. So, um, you know, when I hired Mike Babcock, he was, he had passion, he had, he had a work ethic, he, and he 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 became a Red Wing. Um, ultimately, I think that. That you know, he went into this process and he made the decision that he made today. Um, I believe it was a difficult decision for him, um, not only to, to choose to go to Toronto, but also to choose to leave Detroit. But I, I know that he had some, you know, a couple other teams that he talked to that 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 uh, were impressive as well. So I, I don't know how to handicap it, but I, I do know that it was a difficult decision. You talked about familiarity. How does that familiarity help Blashill? Well, I, I got to meet with Blash. I know you guys would like me to announce that he's the next <laughs> coach, uh, <laughs> but I, you know, I think there's a process we got to go. I got to meet with Blash. You know, and, and up until up until 11:15 um, today, when I got the call from uh, from from Mike, uh, I haven't really reached out to anybody. I, I wanted to. I, I, I was still. There was a chance that Mike could come back. I mean, we we talked yesterday. Uh, even at, at at eight o'clock this morning, I know that he was he, he was down to the short strokes of making a decision, but he hadn't quite make it. And, and again, between 8 o'clock, 8.15, and 11.15 today, he, he said, I kind of made my decision. So, you know, I got to go spend some time with, with Blash now. Um, again, I, I want the focus of Jeff Blaschel and the Grand Rapids Griffins to be on, you know, winning the next series and, and, and having those young players in our system continue to experience playoff hockey. So I, I, I don't want... You know, at some point in time, I'll, I'll 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 get into Grand Rapids on an off day, spend some time with Blash, and then from there, you know, there's is there another name or two? Let me see how the first converse, the, the first meeting goes with uh, with Jeff Blash. Well, certainly, certainly with Blash, um, you know, we've worked together. So it's, but it's been, you know, he was here for a year as an assistant coach. He worked more for Mike. I go in the room. I I, I, I talk to the head coach every day. 
Um, Ryan Martin's the general manager. He talks to, uh, to, to, to Blash, so I want to spend some time with Blash, and then, uh, then, I, then I'll decide what's the next step after I've, I've met with Jeff Blashel. Have you spoken to any of the players? Pardon me? Have you spoken to any of the players? Actually, I was talking. I had my meeting today with Henrik Zetterberg, so um, uh, I told when I would, Z came in at 10.30, and I told him I'd, I needed to talk to Babs at 11.15, so I... I, uh, Henrik was one of the first people to find out that uh, of Mike, Mike's decision. Um, I did. I did call um, Pavel Datsuk. Uh, Kroner's in the air, flying from. Uh, he was on a vacation, so uh, I've had Chris Draper t text him so that when he lands, he knows. I'm sure in the world that he lives in a little different world than I am. I'm 60ish. <laughs> he's 30ish. So <coughs> I'm sure he's been a little more up in tune. But but certainly I wanted the the, the leaders leadership captains and assistant captains to hear from me of, of, of what my decision what, was. What did Hank say? Uh, not much. He just said he's been watching it from afar and I, you know, I think that, you know, uh, you know, I'd like to think that, the Detroit, you know, we, we we're trying to build something. Hen Hank's the captain. Um, Mike's made a decision. Uh, we now got to go to work and Mike's in our division. You know, he's four hours down the road, and we're going to play him four times, and they're trying to make the playoffs, and we're trying to make the playoffs. So uh, uh, I'm sure Hank is like I am. He's thankful for 10 fabulous years, but uh, he's now somebody that uh, we got to we got to try to beat. He didn't, he didn't say much. I had so many people, so much going on there. I quickly called Hank. I said, I want you to hear it from me, because he had left left the rink, and he had gone somewhere, and uh, Draper came in, and things were going, and, and my phone was texting, and uh, things were going on, so I just wanted to reach out to Hank as he was driving, just to say, Hank, just so you hear it from me first. So we, uh, we didn't get into much of a, a very long conversation. At that 8 a.m. meeting, a lot of fans would say they wish they could be a fly on the wall for them. I know you said you don't want to push a guy to be here if he doesn't want to be yeah. here, but was it one final sales pitch? What was that hour like? Uh, I mean, he'd gone through his process. I think he was close to making a decision. Um, he just wanted to take, I, he wanted to have one, we had one last, one, one last, one last conversation. You know, I, you know, I think that was, that's about it. I mean, at, at the end of the day, uh, he needed one last conversation and, uh, you know, talked about, again, I talked about today that, that I felt that, you know, f from a term standpoint, you know, we sort of were at, at our limit in term. And beyond, if, I, if we weren't prepared to go any more term, then it was harder to, to go. And it, does, and it doesn't even mean that if we went more term that he was going to be back. You know, he'd, 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 he spent a lot of time here over the last... Uh, however long it was, two weeks, you know, kind of getting himself to, to that point in time. And I think that, uh, you know, I also think that, that as he's going through the process that um, there's emotions involved, you know, because, because you've worked together for so long. So I, th I think that you've also got to go through that process of, you know, one meeting leads to another meeting to understanding that that, that emotion is going to... You're slowly making a decision to head in a, in, a, in, a, in another direction. So I mean, I think today when I met him at eight o'clock, I think he was well on his way to making a decision, but he wasn't a hundred percent there. Um, and between our meeting there and, and eleven fifteen, he made a decision that uh, that he did. Ken, in the way this played out in public, there were times that it was almost like a circus type atmosphere. The way he played it out in public, were you comfortable the entire time? The way he played this out. Uh, Thinking back about the interview on Friday, it looked like at times he may have been a little uncomfortable. Was that the Drager interview? Yeah. Uh, somebody told me I looked uncomfortable. I kind of had my my hands stuck there, and I wasn't sure if I should move my hands or not move my <laughs> hands because I kind of got started there. So if I looked uncomfortable, <laughs> I was I wasn't uncomfortable. I guess my comfort level has been that we got ten great years. You know, it's it's a decade. That's a long time in pro sports. Um, I've built up a friendship with a man that, that, that we talked about today that we, we want to go on for the rest of our lives. My daughter's getting married in July. He's coming. Him and Maureen are coming to the wedding. So it's been 10 fabulous years. You know, wish we'd have won a couple more series. You know, we feel disappointed we weren't able to finish off the Tampa Bay series when you're up 3-2. And we talked about the Chicago series two years ago. But, but, but. Lots has gone on that, 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 that you know, you're, you're there every day. We're, we're trying to develop some develops in young people. So it's emotional. It's, 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 it's 10 years. It's, it's been 10. From our perspective, again, 
we wish we'd have won more playoff series. We, we, you know, certainly in the Boston series, I think a, a year ago, we weren't, we weren't ready to go anywhere in that Boston series, given the injuries and given the team that we played. But we wish we'd have, you know, we had a few game sevens. You know, you think about game seven against Pittsburgh, and you think game seven in, in San Jose when we were down 3 nothing, and you think being up 3-1 against Chicago, we couldn't win the series. We, went, we talked about Tampa being up 3-2, to two and we couldn't win the series. But, you know, that's, that's, that's you, you win some of those series, and all of a sudden the record looks better, but we're the only team to make the playoffs 10 straight years in a row. We worked hand in hand. Um, I think, I'd like to, th he said to me, you know, today, I, I've challenged him to make him better and vice versa, and, but at the end of the day, um, all good things come to an end, and he's on to a new chapter of his life, his professional career, and now, same thing. I, I've got to make some decisions here about who the next coach of the Detroit Red Wings is. And our goal is to try to make the playoffs, and our tro goal is to try to win some playoff series. Um, but with regards to Mike, it's been 10 fabulous years professionally and personally. Um, and and, and he, he made the decision based upon all the information, the process he went. And, and from a circus standpoint, I'm fortunate I'm not on Twitter. I don't tweet. I don't Twitter. <laughs> uh, I, 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 I do that for a reason. You know, I don't read newspapers. Um, certainly when we're sitting there at breakfast on Thursday morning in Prague and Mike says to me, you know, I, uh, Darren Dreger would like to fly over and, and interview us. I'm thinking, you're flying over from Toronto. Really? We're in Prague. Boy, I'd, you know, you start to get a, you know, you, it, it's a bit, you know, they're going to they're gonna fly over from, from, from Toronto to sit with us. And we sat in and we did for a seven-minute uh, for a seven or eight minute interview, you, you certainly understand the, the scope of, of how big it is, but I don't, uh, I don't go on all those other those social medias for a reason. You know, it's just so that I want to stay focused on what I got to do. Uh, I got Chris Draper that is on social media. I've got Ryan Martin that's on social media. I've got people in my organization that keep me posted as, as I need to know what's going on out there. So, so from a circus standpoint, certainly I know, certainly in the last two days, you know, when Mike said on that interview that I think Darren Drager asked him if, if he'd be ready to make his, his decision on May the 25th, and he said, I'll be ready to make it on May 20th. Certainly when we landed back here on Monday afternoon and I got in the office on Tuesday morning, and I'm losing the today, I mean, it, the days have gone fast, yesterday, and all of a sudden uh, my phone's going crazy and there's media and, and, and uh, you start to, uh, and, and, and people are sensing a, 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 a decision you start to, I started to, you know, grasp that circus atmosphere that you were talking about. But up until, you know, the last three, four days, uh, I just, my attitude was we had a, we had a, I had a, an employee, a friend, a coach that, that had helped uh, give us 10 great years. He wanted an opportunity to explore the market before he made a decision. And I wanted to, I wanted, there was, there was, pr there was a number of different ways that I thought that I could possibly handle the situation with Mike being an unrestricted free agent. I thought that was ultimately the, the best way to be, f to be fair to Mike. And at the same time, if Mike was back, knowing that Mike had gone through a process and he was back here because we were the best fit for him. And if we weren't the best fit for him, I got to find a new coach and we got to continue doing what, what Mike and I were doing up until uh, three, four days ago. Is 50 million ever an option for the Wings, and what kind of a burden will that put on other teams wanting to approach it? Well, the answer to it would be no, and I would, I would come back to you because, because it's more term. You know, at the end of the day, uh, I told Mike, and Mike understood, I, I couldn't justify going past five years. Mike had been here for 10 years, and I can tell you about what a great, but we've only won one playoff round in four years. We, we, we've got higher... Uh, we had bigger goals than, than, than to make the playoffs. So, you know, to wake up t two, three years from now and if, if we're not able to kind of take this thing, to take this program to the next level, then, then everybody starts looking at, at, at options. So, again, because I've been here for 18 years, because Mike has been here for, for 10 years, there was a limit on term, and when you've got a limit on term and the people that you're negotiating against don't have a limit on term, um, it starts to become a factor. Fair to say that this isn't the end of the world, losing a coach like that. You, as far as comfort goes, you look like a guy who maybe seems a little, not to put words in your mouth, a little relieved. A little weird <laughs> yeah, well, I'm, I'm glad, obviously I'm glad. I think Mike would be, probably say, I think he's having a conference, a press conference tomorrow. I'm sure Mike's going to say it's, he's glad the, the, the process <laughs> is over and, 
now I can get on to some other things. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm glad that, you know, I'm glad to know of a decision. Um, I can now get on with, uh, with what's next, you know, part of what's next obviously is to talk to some coaches and we got the NHL combine, you know, there's NHL combines coming up. We got our pro scouts coming in for meetings to prepare for free agency and, you know, I've had some, since I got back, some managers call and they're starting to have conversations leading into the, into the uh, NHL draft. So, um, I mean, now I know where we sit on the coaching front. Now I know that I've got to uh, go through a process and uh, find the next coach of the Detroit Red Wings, and uh, hopefully the next the next coach we find that we can work together and and um, have as have as much fun and uh, as much success and maybe more success than than, than, than Babs and I had. Well, uh, first off, Wojo, you know, at the end of the day, I gave Mike an opportunity to go through a process, and he chose to be somewhere else. So my attitude always has been, you know, I want to try to find, you know, the, 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 the 23 players, and you want to find the people that want to be in Detroit. So, you know, Mike made a decision that he, that he wants to be in Toronto. Um, I believe we're going to have a good head coach. Um, I think Mike is, you know, I've always said Mike is, 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 he's not the best head coach. He's one of the best head coaches. You know, sometimes Wojo, and, that's, and this is where I sort of get to, he's been here for 10 years. I don't know what, Mike and I didn't know what two or three years was going to bring. You know, like, like the last three years we made the playoffs on, I think, uh, you know, game, in a 48-game schedule, game 48, game 81, and, 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 and game uh, 82. So... You know, we're, we've been a team that's been, you know, sort of right on the what I call the bubble. We found a way to play our way, play our way in. Um, sometimes change is good. Uh, if, if I can make the right decision, um, and, and, and uh, sometimes change is good. So, you know, certainly Mike Babcock is making this decision today, believing that change is good for his career. You know, I'm sure he'll say that tomorrow. He's probably looking. It's a different. It's a different challenge it's a it's a it's a different opportunity it's a we're the same you know it's it's we had 10 great years um and after a process mike 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 decided to go somewhere else so i'm not going to fold the franchise we're going to we're going to go to we're going to go to work and we're going to try to uh, to beat mike you know mike's in toronto mike's down the road mike wants to he wants to go into Toronto and help them make the playoffs. Well, we want to be in that race and we want to finish ahead of them. So it's certainly going to make for an interesting, uh, uh, you know, kind of side story as we head into the 15, 16 I season. That, I imagine that helped that you were brought here for the Paris Olympics. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's certainly, Je you know, like, uh, you know, if we hire Jeff Blaschel, certainly that'll probably be one of the things that I'll talk about is, is the succession plan. I just want to, I bef you know, because Grand Rapids is in the playoffs, because I haven't, you know, it's Mike Babcock, up, up until probably, up until 11 o'clock this morning, there was always the possibility that I picked up the phone or Mike came and said, I'm deciding I'm going to stay. So, you know, I haven't gone about any process of talking to any, any people about the job. It was, it was Mike's job. So, you know, when Mike, when Mike called me at 11.15, you know, Certainly, I, I, I expected you know a number of people here, um, and I wanted. I reached out to Blash to say, Blash, you know, in the next little while, you're, you're the first guy that I want to talk to. You've been in the organization. You've been the, the, the head coach of Grand Rapids. You've been Mike's assistant coach. So, that's that's the first step. Uh, uh, once I have that meeting, I'll know what the next step is. You mentioned a, you mentioned a succession plan. We know that works with players. How you hold guys down, bring them up this way. Does that really work well with coaches as well? Can it? Uh, I don't have that answer for you because first of all, I got to I got to talk to Blash, and then you know wh whenever you know if I decide after talking to Blash, I'd like to talk to another person or two. Uh, you know, in the next day or two, I'll probably put together a, again. I'm gonna uh, we're not going through it. I'm not gonna interview eight and ten people. You know, like it's I I, I might interview one. I might interview two or three. I, I'm gonna decide that in the next in the in the next in the next few days. Um, that answer is going to have to play itself out first off by 
what decision we make I make as the next head coach and then and then watching watching the um, watch the watch the story play out watch you know you, t you you come to the games you watch where we sit in the standings and you watch how everything goes so I don't think for me to say oh yeah 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 pro sports is too hard I don't know but certainly I believe when I stand up here in the next uh, couple of weeks and we have a press conference to introduce the next head coach of the Detroit Red Wings I believe we're going to have a very good coach. You've yeah. been able to get younger. You've been able to stay competitive. Does that make this whole thing easier, this change? Yeah, I think so. I think y what's made it easy for me is it was Mike's decision. You know, um, and again, I think, you know, I, when I'm going to go back t two weeks when Mike and I sat in the car and, and Mike requested or asked, or I don't know, however, he, he wanted the, the opportunity to to get the word out that he would be wanted to talk to a team that had interested to him and I, I, I you know I, I, went, I went over to Mr. Miss Illich's house and we sat down we walked through it everything and I, I said there's you know a number of different ways we could handle this I thought this was the best way I thought this was the best way for the Detroit Red Wings and I thought this was the best way for for Mike Babcock excuse me at the same time I'm going to come back to again 10 years, you know, the people that have helped us win Stanley Cups and the people that have played here a long time, I want to make sure that they, they call, they can sit in the press box, they can get in the rink, they can come in the locker room. They built this thing, you know, like they've, whatever you, th whatever you think of the Detroit Red Wings, those players, Scotty Bowman, you know, I, Dave Lewis was a coach, but he was an assistant coach here for 18 years, now Mike Babcock, they've helped build us into what we are and certainly so for my op ch chance to thank Mike was to grant him his request. And as we sit here today, my comfort level in, I is that I'd, I'd like to think that I tried, treated, uh, treated Mike with respect, I gave him an opportunity to pursue what he wanted to pursue. He made a decision today. And now we gotta, we got to go about the process of finding the next head coach of the, uh, of the Detroit Red Wings. Um, I'd like to think that it, that, that Mike feels he did. He thanked me for the opportunity to to, to go through this process and make and make a decision. And what, what was Mike Illich's reaction? What was Mike Illich's reaction when you told him? Well, I think he, he, Mike Illich, his reaction was the same as probably mine, and I would speak for Jimmy D. Like it's been a process. So over the course of the last three, four, five days. You know, well, I, you know, I think he's going. Uh, you know, y y you sort of, you sort of come to the realization that there's, there's a real chance he's going to leave. And when the call comes, I called Mr. Illich and said uh, he's going to Toronto. I mean, what, what can we say? I mean, we gave Mike, Mike, the, 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 the green light to explore the market. And when you give somebody the green light to explore the market, I'm going to come back to again when they're, when they're in the prime of their career. This is this is a real possibility. So um, I think Mike Yellich's reaction is the same as mine. Uh, let's go find the next head coach. So what what are the answers from uh, Jeff Glasgow? Pardon me. In your mind, what are the answers you should make Jeff Glasgow if you were? Uh, I would say to you. First off, you know he seems to have something. He wins, you know, wherever he goes. You know, I I look at what he did in. In, in Western Michigan and getting them into the, the NCAA tournament. And he, I think he had a, a tremendous positive attitude and or positive influence in really building that program. I think prior to that, I think he won in, in the championship in, I believe, Indianapolis. You know, he, he took over, uh, we've got a thing called the Prospect Tournament in Traverse City. Uh, it's now eight NHL teams. We'd never won that tournament. He coached the team. His first year, we hired him as a Grand Rapids coach. He coached. They won that tournament. They won the Calder Cup. Last year, with all the injuries we had in Detroit and all the players up here, they had the same, the same thing down there. They ended up getting, I think, 99 points. He was named the coach of the year in the American Hockey League. Um, he's got 100 points this year. They're now in the third round of the playoffs. They were down 2-0 to Toronto in the first round of the playoffs. So number one, he, he's, he wins. Now, why does he win? Um, I think I, th I think a good coach, and I, 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 you know, when I look at Mike Babcock and I see lots of similarities in Jeff Blaschel, but again, I want to I want to talk to him, making players accountable, um, having a tremendous work ethic, having passion, 
having a plan. You know, Jeff has coached at di different levels, just like, you know, Mike Babcock went from, you know, Sp Moose Jaw and University of Lethbridge and, and um, uh, Spokane to the American League to, to the National League to a different team. You know, Jeff blaschel has been the same. Um, you know, different levels uh, had success. Uh, spent time here under Mike Babcock. I, I, again, I, my, my respect for Mike, you know, t spending a year kind of learning under Mike and then going down to Grand Rapids. So um, I, I think those are enough. You know, you make people accountable, work ethic. He's got a plan. He's coached before. He's got experience. He wins. Um, you know, I five years and made a difference or was that term just really a deal breaker? Well, I mean, if, if you, if, if, I mean, all you got to do is you can divide by what we've got at five uh, and you, you, st <laughs> <laughs> you start to try to get to the number that's out there, <laughs> superstar players don't make that amount of money. So it just, it, it, uh, I don't even know if there's three or four players in the entire league that make that kind of money. So it gets, you know, term, term for me, and Mike understood. I think Mike will talk about it tomorrow. I, you know, Mike and I are friends. Mike and I are, 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 are you know, business associates. We worked, we worked hand in hand. I think Mike understood. He understood that ten years coaching the same team. It's a lifetime. You know, he's some of these. There's four, five, six players in this locker room. He's coached their entire career of, of, of pro hockey. So he understands that, and, and that that you know, over the next year or two. You, you know, who knows where things are going to go. So he understood why I held on term. I, 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 and if I held on term, I couldn't, uh, there, was n there was nowhere to even get remotely close to what uh, other options he had. Was there a coaching? Last question. question. Will, you, will you say that? Is, was there a concern that maybe the message wasn't getting across or would not get across the next couple No of years? chance. I mean, up to this point in time, I can't, t I can't, I can't tell you about the future, Ted, but I would say to you today, in the 10 seasons that Mike has been here, I can't say at the end of the year that I said our team underachieved. Uh, that's how I judge a coach. You look at your players, you look at your at, at, at the injuries, you, you look at your competition and you say, did we underachieve? I, I can say we've had some disappointments. I just, I read some of the disappointments, you know, the, the playoff losses, but I can't say over 82 games that we ever underachieved. I think that, and, and, and at the same time, I think there's a lot of players that, that, that sit in these stalls in this locker room that are better players today um, because Mike made them accountable, because Mike had a plan, because Mike pushed them, because Mike was, was, was on top of them every day. So, you know, that's what a coach, that's how I judge a coach. Does he, does he make players better? Does he, does he get the most out of the group? Um, and and, and uh, do you get better as the year wears on? And, and and you know we had did we have disappointments? Yeah, we had disappointments. We had we had disappointing losses in some series. And certainly, I respect that these other teams are out there trying to win too. But but at the end of the day, when the year is over, um, you know I, we had we had the second most man games in, uh, due to injury two years ago. We found a way to crawl into the playoffs with with our young players. And um, so now, Ted. You know what does next year bring, and the year after bring, and the year after bring. You start to get to year 11, to year 12, to year 13. Certainly, uh, when you offer a five-year term, I certainly felt that Mike had, you know, three, four, five years that he could that he could um, continue to get the most out of our group. But to start to think that you were going to go beyond that again, 10 years is is is. Is 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 an eternity in professional sports. I was offering half that term already, you know. So ultimately, um, I guess the, uh, I made a decision to stick tight to the five years. M Mike totally understood. Um, and now there's another there's an opportunity for us for us here going forward. Will this Thank help you. your future trade prospects? What's that? Will this help your future trade prospects? I future don't think trades? it's gonna. I, I don't. I, no, I, th I don't think either. I think that, I think it's a hard league to make trades in, and uh, we're going to have a good coach. Um, you know, I think there's lots of positives. The youth on our team. We're going into a brand new building here in the next uh, uh, couple of years. Um, we've got, you know, got to watch Dylan Larkin play. 
I, I, we got some, you know, I, I, they want to go to Grand Rapids in the next round. So I, I think that we've got some, some, some important building blocks. And whether Mike's the coach or whoever's the next coach, I don't think that I don't think that that has any bearing on, on, on trades or free agency. Isn't the decision hasn't been made on the third round pick? What? The decision hasn't been made on the third round pick. Uh, we do get compensation. The Leafs over us a third round pick in any one of the next, I believe it's the three drafts, mm -hmm. and it's their choice. No, I, I'm sure. I'm sure they'll wait to see how the year wears on, and 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 uh, I'm sure the higher they can get it, the better they want it. So. Does it at least behoove the Kings to sort of get something done when they don't? Have what I would do, and this will be the last thing. What I'm going to do is, at some point in time, after tonight, I'm not sure if Grand Rapids is a home team or a road team. And if they play U Utica, they they open in Utica on Sunday, Monday. If they're the home team, they open Saturday, Sunday against Oak City. I want to see the schedule. Um, and then when I can find a day when they're in, in, in Grand Rapids, a, a non-game day, I want to go down, spend time with Blash, have a good conversation. He's the first person I want to talk to. Um, certainly, you know, if you go back a year ago, um, Blash had a year to go on his contract, and I had five teams call and ask for permission to interview Jeff Blash. And I went to Blash, and I said, I give, I'll give you two choices. Your call, give you a choice to go in and talk to any of the teams that you want to and your contract stays the same or I'm going to give you a significant raise. We doubled his salary and for one year you agree you don't go in an interview and, and Blash said to me, he said, Ken, I like it here. I want to continue to um, develop as a coach. So, so basically um, he's in year one of a three-year deal. Uh, I owe it to Blash to talk to him first and then based upon uh, that conversation, then I'll decide whether there's more conversations or more interviews or I'll make a decision. But but again, I like to be loyal to people. Blash was loyal to us. Blash chose to stay. Blash could have interviewed with a lot of teams. Blash has had a real positive impact on the younger people in our organization. He's had a real positive impact in Grand Rapids. Uh, part of our success here in Detroit in making the playoffs Blash has had his fingerprints on it, so I owe it to Jeff Blashell that, 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 that uh, he's the first person I talk to. So can you give some status to the assistant coach in Granado? Uh, Tony Granado has a, uh, uh, his option. He had two years to go on a deal with Pittsburgh, so when he came, I said, I'll give you a one-year deal, and it's, it's your option. So if there was change, he could. Um, Brew and uh, Jim Hiller both agreed to come in one-year deals because Babs had a one-year deal. So, uh, <laughs> um, you know, I, you know, my take would be again, uh, I'll see. Um, you know, I want people that want to be in Detroit, and uh, their contracts are up. So certainly, I was I was a big boy. I understood when we signed those people to one-year deals, the f what could happen in the summer of 2015. So, uh, let that that'll play out here over the next two or three weeks. Okay, yeah, thanks. Thank you. I'll pull up in my shot. I didn't even. Oh, no. I don't know. 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 I don't